Namaste, Jai Kali, Jai Mahadev, Jai Bharat. I hope everyone is doing good and taking good care of themselves. Remember, if you're fit and fine, you can take better care of your loved ones. आज आप लोगों को जैसा कि पता होगा कि आज हमारे साथ डॉक्टर दिलीप अमीन जी फिर से जुड़े हैं एंड वो किसी इंट्रोडक्शन के मोहताज नहीं है बट जस्ट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइमर्स हु आर सींग डॉक्टर साहब ऑन माई चैनल ही इज अ साइंटिस्ट ही हैज ऑथर्ड प्लेंटी ऑफ आर्टिकल्स एंड बुक्स एंड ही हैज बीन हेल्पिंग इंटरफेथ शादी ही हैड बीन काउंसलिंग एंड शोइंग द राइट पार्थ टू एंडलेस नंबर ऑफ यूथ वेन इट कम्स टू इंटरफेथ मैरिज and yes so we have uh, him with us ab unka swagat karte hain without any delay uh, dr amin ji namaste aapka bahut bahut swagat hai thank you so much thank you thank you for this invitation it's really my honor and uh, honor to be talking to you so namaskar to all thank you yes एंड uh, मैं एक और चीज uh, दर्शकों को बताना चाहती हूँ कि आप लोगों के uh, अगर कुछ भी सवाल हैं फ्रॉम दन एंड ओनली एक्सपर्ट दिलीप अबीन जी तो आफ्टर द एंटायर टॉक इज ओवर आई मीन वी आर एस्टिमेटिंग इट आफ्टर एन आर एन आर एन हाफ एंड उसके बाद फिर आप अपने क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं एंड डॉक्टर साहब विल ट्राई हिज लेवल बेस्ट टू आंसर इट ये सो लेट मी पुट अप द प्रेजेंटेशन um and dr saab now the show is yours i am all ears please great okay Thank let's uh, start with the sh- uh, thing now i said this is a training to be a consultant why a training so it's a different kind of presentation than normally you are used to normally you do is uh, you just learn it and done with it here i Thank want you. you to learn it and go one step further meaning go Jee. and apply your knowledge other place Jee. so you may wonder why i am training you now i have been working for the past 16 years on this field solo just alone have guided 1200 youths around the world on interfaith marriages and have written two books on it i have also stopped at least 50 if not find it religious conversions now i'm 69 years old uh i cannot continue this forever so i'm hoping that i can train you and you can carry on this message to all over so you please carry on this mission further so that's why i'm giving you higher responsibility than just being a listener i want you to be consultant now you may wonder that uh, interfaith marriage wo interfaith shaadiya humko kyu janna hai mere ha usme mujhe kyu janna zaruri hai ji let me tell you this uh, i have done this survey in america and found that 38% of our hindu youths married to christian jews and muslim here 38% uh now this even in india uh especially in big cities the interfaith marriages are increasing so many going on now interfaith marriages are like a covid infection you thought you not going to get it i'm just perfect and all of a sudden somehow conspicuously you get it so this presentation if you spend one hour it will work like a covid vaccine one hour will save your family's uh, situation or you can help your neighbor or somebody so when you least expected when you send your daughter out to college 17 years old uh you wonderfully every day she does puja aarti and then go to college and all of a sudden she may come back one day and says well i'm in love with mom what you will do at that time if you heard me out you will be really well prepared so this is your vaccine for covid don't forget uh, so pay attention good attention now you may wonder okay these are muslims um these are hindus how about muslims how many percentage of muslim boys and girls marry outside their faith outside islam so i did the survey also and found that 45% of muslim youths in america at least the survey samples i took it marry outside islam 
45 percent of that includes 45.2 percent of muslim girls so equal number of muslim girls also looking to marry outside islam or they are actually marrying now one big difference is when muslim marries outside again i don't have any survey results and all that but my feeling and based on 1200 youths i consulted i would say that probably 90 percent or 95 percent of these muslims make the other party convert to islam so that means for them interfaith marriage is a way to expand islam in america or in india versus for hindus normally i have seen that they are willing to mix and match something here there that's what they are ready for so that's why it's important for you to know about interfaith marriages even though you think uh, this is never going to happen to your family or to your neighbor's family your friend's family so that's why please listen to it now there are certain terminologies sometimes it gets technical so let me explain it now i'm not talking about inter caste meaning gujarati marrying to bengali brahmin marrying to kshatriya no i'm not talking about inter caste Further, I'm not talking about interrace, meaning black marrying to white, no. But I'm talking about interfaith. So when I say interfaith, meaning dharmic, uh, that is Sanatani, you know, Hindus, Jains, Buddhists, Sikhs, all of them I'm putting together, them marrying to Abrahamic. And if you don't know, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, you can say these are the three sons of a father, Abraham. So they are all same religions with some differences, small differences here. They are all more or less same. Gee. So those are the terminology. Now, to tell you a little more, there is a clear difference between Abrahamic and Dharmics. First, Abrahamics are exclusivist versus Dharmic are pluralist. Now, these are difficult terms, so I will explain you in the next slide a little more. Further, the circumcision that's uh, very vital in uh, Abrahamic, especially in Judaism and Islam, that's a must. Versus in Dharmic, uh, cutting that skin has uh, no meaning, that's not a practice. Uh, end times, there is a burial in Abrahamic versus uh, cremation in uh, Dharmic faiths. And afterlife, once you, somebody dies, Abrahamic believes that uh, there will be a judgment day. Allah will or God will come, Father God will come and judge everybody. You go to heaven, you go to hell, and this world, all those, the cell phone and the puri dunya, gum ho jayegi. Everything will be vacuumed back to it. So that's their judgment day philosophy. Versus Dharmic feels that it's a complete, everything is cyclical. The world has been there for millions of years. It will keep on going. You keep on taking new births. So that's the incarnation. Now back to exclusivism and uh, pluralism. Pluralism is uh, if you believe in Iswar Allah Teronam, there is one God, different names. You want to pray towards Mecca side, so be it. You want to go to church and pray, so be it. You want to go to Mandir, pray. Nothing wrong with that. That's a pluralist thinking. Pluralism in interfaith marriages, as I define it, is uh, when the two couple are willing to share two faiths. Meaning if Muslim and Hindus are marrying, they will go to mosque on Friday and Mandir on Saturday or church on Sunday. Respect each other's beliefs truly, meaning uh, follow the Ramadan as well as follow Diwali. Respect each other, more reason to celebrate and also celebrate the uh, Christmas. And equality, everything is 50-50. So that's my definition of pluralism in interfaith marriages. And that's the title of my book, Share and Respect with Equality. Exclusivism, that's all Abrahamic faiths are. And they believe they are superior and they are exclusive. God has special connection with them, which you Dharmics don't. They believe there is only one God which is okay, but it's only my God, not your God. <laughs> that's funny, but that's the way they think. That is, there is only one God. So if you're in college and if your friend, somebody says, oh, there is only one God, you know, I say that's a very dangerous statement because that person is saying that there is only one God and that's my God. 
that's telling are you out of your mind i mean which one one god you talking about is it a god described by mamad or is a god described by uh christians or god described by buddhists or hindus which god and further for that reason in terms of interfaith marriages the abrahamic will want hindus or none others to convert to the extent that their own brothers a christian will want muslims to convert to christianity muslim will want christian to convert to each other so this conversion business is really sick minded uh, applications into uh, interfaith marriages and in today's days and age in 2021 i'm here to tell that practice should end and end now that's what i'm working on so now what is we going to learn today now let's say you are hindu you already know your faith everything you know it but you know if you learn how the other faiths are how they believe in god there is so much to learn and you will enjoy it and further it will actually increase your own faith meaning you will be become more uh, appreciative of what faith you have maybe it's the same for you are a muslim and listening to this it will make you even more perfect in your thinking of uh, your beliefs and all that so that's why it will increase your knowledge and that's good for your own faith now i'm preparing you as i say to be a guide you are a consultant maybe some day somebody will pay you uh to for your consultation fee so if somebody is in love relationship maybe it's you are in your own own daughter son or maybe neighbor's daughter or somebody says can you come and help me out now you know it so that's why you are being a consultant and with this knowledge i am hoping that in your lifetime you will be able to stop at least 10 religious conversions in life and that is not far fetched life is long and if you keep keeping eye open and keep guiding people you will stop so many conversions so i mean that's a godly work so that's a objective now what is my object uh, approach what what new i am bringing it now when there is an interfaith uh, relationship people for example family father mother they are sitting having nice coffee all of a sudden son comes and says dad i'm in love with jennifer or mom i'm in love with mohammed all of a sudden the wonderful nice family goes to hell boom boom galiya shuru ho jayegi ghar mein uh, mother will start crying and cursing the son and daughter ke aise bacche ko kyun janm diya and father will say i disobey you i will kick you out this and that point is at home front the situation is whole different and that i don't endorse it but that's your family situation you can manage how it works for you so that's not what i'm teaching now there are love jihadi groups as you know in especially in india and all over the world their objective is to help those interfaith couple with the objective of expanding their faith now there are also anti love jihadi groups and their objective is to somehow create uh, difficulty for that couple to go through the marriage so these love jihadi as well as anti love jihadi groups they have their own objective they have their own ways of working but again that's not what i am endorsing here uh because for example if there is let's say city like bombay mumbai uh there is a physician there young guy 22 20 22 uh, years old he is already making money on his own and he's in love with a muslim or hindu or whatever faith and this love jihad is start coming and uh, attacking him or her you know that person says look stop this i'm going to call police get a police uh, protection and they can go ahead and marry whoever they want it that is nothing this uh, anti groups or four groups can do it so as much as this both those objectives are people are using i am ask, asking to do something different totally novel that's and that it's based on my book and approach is 
will work really great, especially in most educated of our youths. And especially, as I mentioned, that's a highly educated independent. I mean, they are already making money on their own. Parents says, I don't care for you. The son will say, who cares for you anyway? I'm going to marry whoever I want to. So this is the place I'm going to help out. Uh, so please, so it's a different approach. Now, I'm, I told you that you are being a consultant. You're not just being an uncle, auntie, or college friends who is helping somebody. So you, as a consultant, you have to act totally different. You have to be neutral, and then only you'll be successful. And uh, it is very vital to understand that you are putting a consultant hat. You're not putting a regular you, whatever you are. What does it mean? As a consultant, you cannot decide for them. Look, bache, sadi me, uh, uh, sadi karna hai na? You are doing is wrong. No, no, no. Don't. You cannot do those things. Only your objective is uh, when you heard it, you try to understand them. Okay, you want to get married? Oh, is this right? Tell me more. Tell me more. This, that. So you have to first understand. Spend more time. And that is very vital. For example, you have a stomach uh, age. doctor ke paas mein chale gaye. Take this go away. You said, what kind of stupid doctor is that? He even never heard me. So just like that, this patient comes to you, interfaith couple, you have to spend a lot of time listening to them. You have to spend at least 70, 80% of time listening, listening, listening. Yes, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. And more you learn about them, you will be able to uh, guide them properly. So be a good listener. That's important. And never ever criticize the other faith. Don't say that, oh, Muslims, forget it. Woto saleh. No, no, no. I, you cannot do that. Because the person is in love for three to 10 years. They already decided what they want to do it. And now you just find it out. So you cannot, you, you can criticize somebody. You lost your case. Patient is dead on the arrival. That's what I say in my medical term. So never criticize anyone. So again, remember, you are being a consultant. So you are not just uh, average uh, uncle going advising somebody. So if you do that, then you'll be very successful in what I'm trying to tell you. Now, why Hindu parents have failed in when it comes to interfaith marriage? I have seen absolutely it's horrible. Hindu parents have lost totally. Why? Because Hindu parents, today's Hindu parents are not aligned with their second generation. The bachi aaj ke, they are gone too far out. Good or bad, I don't, I don't say, I'm not saying it, but they are far out. Hindu parents have perceived belief that uh, interfaith marriage is, is wrong. And that is wrong. You cannot uh, do those things, especially if your son or daughter is already in love. And there is a lack of knowledge about Abrahamic faiths. Those Christian, Jews, Muslim, Hindus, ko pata hai nahi hai, kaun hai, wo pata nahi hai, ya wo Quran mein padhte hai, wo church mein jaate hai, bade bade church hote hai, achhi clean priest hote hai, they are very impressed by it. But they don't know what is, who their God is, what are their beliefs there, and all that. So that's what we will learn today. Uh, also, uh, they have a very irrational issues. A irrational approach when whatever the issue is at hand. And that's why they are failing it. Now, what is my overall message? What I'm here to tell you. Now, I'm not supporting interfaith marriage, nor I'm against interfaith marriage. Kisiko interfaith marriage may I interfaith me love ho gaya. That's not my fault. It happened. So uh, I'm just here. If somebody is already in interfaith love relationship, I'm here to help. That's about it. That's only my limitation. So I'm not for or against. So don't blame me that uh, you are promoting interfaith marriages. No. But I'm here that people have rights to change the religion. For example, Kali Dasi Ji, she changed from uh, Islam to Hinduism. That's her choice. If some Hindu wants to become Muslim, 
then wants to be Sikh, wants to become uh, Christians. It's their choice. So I'm 100% for expect uh, religious conversions. If they want to change it, religion conversion is not my problem. But I'm against the practice of religious conversion for marriage. So remember, I said I'm not against religious conversion, but I'm against the expectation of religious conversion for marriage. So that practice has been going on for last 1500 years because Muhammad said so or uh, those uh, Christian churches put it on. And that's why they keep, it is going on even today. And that practice should end. That has no meaning today. So that's what I'm against it. And if it is an interfaith marriage, my vision is share and respect with equality as the title of my book. Now, we did a lot of discussions and uh, let's take a practical practical example. So you know what we are talking about. So naturally, let's take three Khans. You know Khans uh, from your Bollywoods and their interfaith marriages. Saruk Khan, Amir Khan, and Saif Ali Khan and his family's situation. Now, in my book, I'm saying that Saruk Khan, whatever he did it, is an admirable act. I know Kafi Hindus go, uh, I'm saying this thing, but honestly, I believe as far my message and goal is there, Saruk Khan is an admirable act for the reason that here you can see in this photo, uh, Saruk Khan is doing punja. Uh, what he says, his uh, daughter is uh, uh, performing, saying Gayatri Mantra. He says Bismillah, meaning he's sharing two faiths. He's respecting his wife, Gauri Khan, and uh, also never asked for conversion. So as far as I'm concerned, that's an admirable. Amir Khan is exactly opposite. If this statement is true, as I read it somewhere, Amir Khan said, that my children will be Muslim only. Now he had two Hindu wives. Uh, I mean, not at a time, but uh, after one ending, a second one. And what does he mean by children will be Muslim only? A Hindu mother is carrying child for nine months. She does not have right to call children mine. I mean, Hindus, because you, you give sperm, that's why my children will be Muslim only. I mean, that's a nonsensical statement. So if this statement is right, then I will ask Amir Khan that is it a male chauvinism or religious fanaticism? Let's move to the third interesting case. And that's a Khan, uh, Saif Ali Khan's family. You know Saif Ali Khan's mother, Sharmila Tagore. She converted to Islam. Her name is Begum Ayesa Sultana. They have three children. And all of them are raised as Muslim only. So here, there is no equality here. Everything is on the Islam side. 100% Sarmila Tagore is Hindu, become 100% Muslim. So that's in the past. And that's not something I endorse and should not be today. Now, let's see how their, her son's doing, at least two of them. Saif Ali Khan, married to Amrita, uh, Amrita Singh. A Sikh, bad marriage, bad uh, uh, practice as far I am concerned. Saif Ali, uh, Kar Saif Karina's marriage as far I am concerned, great. Saif, during a uh, relationship with Amrita, she said that uh, she say she meaning Amrita has to fall in line. I mean, he's saying there is a, some kind of line. She has to go through Nikah, meaning Sheikh becomes uh, Muslim. I mean, that's a safe said it, done deal. And she converted. I mean, that's really antique, uh, really religious, fanatic, uh, or orthodox ideology Saif is carrying or was carrying. Both the children were raised having Muslim names and raised as a Muslim only. And even doing after all those Amrita, Khans, Am Amrita Singh, got a divorce, talaq. So my message to Hindu girls, if you are listening, or boy, this conversion is not, does not buy you anything. Even though you try to do everything, you be submissive and give up everything and still you get talaq. So why to bother? Instead of that, why not follow uh, Karina's thing? Probably in early, early times, Saif may have said, Karina, you have to convert. 
So Saif says, Karina says, no, I will not convert. So Saif realized I am in love anyway. So it completely changed now. He says, this is the trouble with religion, meaning his religion, Islam. He, he says it's a trouble. It expects the conversion. And I don't buy it anymore. Meaning he used to buy it during uh, Amrita time, but now he does not buy anymore. So what I might say to any Hindu youth, a boy or girl, or anyone, including uh, Sikhs and Muslims and uh, 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 Christians and whoever you are, or atheists, be proud of who you are. Remain who you are. I am in love with you. Let's the love ride, not this business of religious conversion. That's my message. Now, continuing on it, now Karina, in my book, I put it on that I, that's an admirable act. But when I saw that now it's the uh, name is Taimur, so I said, oh my God, I mean, where is this going now? So Taimur being the name that again start putting doubts in my mind that that's not a religion of equality because the next generation are again going to Islam. But then I saw this beautiful photo, Taimur is uh, being part of uh, Ganesh Puja. So I mean, wow, Ganesh, uh, Taimur is being part of Ganesh Puja and he's uh, being taught about Hinduism. And Saif also made a statement one time that Taimur feels like he's Lord Ram. And Ramayan is very much like him. So at least based on these two, I mean, in, I get the feeling that probably they are trying to give him knowledge about both faiths. And again, that's admirable. Now, Karina has already a second baby. Name has not been disclosed, but I hope and pray that if they really truly believe in equality, then uh, uh, they will have the second son's or daughter's uh, son's name, uh, a pure Hindu name. Then Taimur and some Arjun or something, whatever. That will be a true equality. So let's find it out uh, what is uh, uh, the outcome will be. Now, Saif sister, Soha Ali Khan, uh, she married to uh, Kunal Khemu and uh, uh, who is a Hindu. But interesting is uh, there was no conversion of Kumar, uh, Kunal. Their daughter, her first name is Ananya. Based on uh, uh, Quran, and the middle name being uh, Naomi, uh, because she was born on uh, Mahan Naomi. Now again, uh, you could be more critical and say that wait, this is a patriarchal society. Why not? Uh, that's uh, based on that is a Hindu. Why not first name being Hindu, and second name being uh, whatever Quranic name? But again, let's not get too critical on it. I was happy to see here that the this Ananya Naomi can sing Gayatri Mantra and that becomes the video becomes uh, very popular at one point and uh, she's tying uh, Rakhi to Taimur. So again, it gives me good feeling that seems like they are trying to mix uh, balance uh, both the religion and that's admirable act. And that's what I'm saying. No religious conversion means it's an admirable act. That's uh, as far the objective I'm here to convey to you. Now, let's say you are guiding some Hindu girl or boy, and uh, you have to explain them this way, that Hindus have nothing to gain by conversion. So if you don't convert, look at this. You could have a wonderful, happy family life. Look at all those uh, Khan family. They're doing great. No conversions, still happy. If you convert, what do you buy? When you ask the party ask for conversion, you have to understand that guy is uh, stuck in some 1500 years old message. Uh, he's a religious fanatic. He may make you perform namas early in the morning and five times a day. He may make you wear burqa. When you convert, that means you are and uh, legally, as per Indian laws, you are permitting your Hindu uh, Muslim husband to have three other wives next to you. So you are putting yourself in le le legal trouble by converting. 
versus you go marry by special marriage act he cannot marry anybody else till he, he clearly divorce you so that's why don't promote polygamy conversion means you are promoting this potentially promoting uh, polygamy you are shooting on your feet so kabhi ye uh, polygamy se dur raho or other thing is as per islamic laws as per sharia laws the conversion uh, the divorce is very easy for male versus uh, very difficult for uh, female so there is nothing you have to gain by converting other than your weakness to speak out against justice what i'm here to tell to the world no conversion is an admirable act uh this conversion business is an antique process some 1500 years old been going on it's uh, and should be end must end and must end now now as i say that uh, you have a daughter 17 years old every day ghar pe puja karke jati hai khati hai prasad khati hai aur baad mein college mein jati hai pranam karte college mein jati hai then why she will going to college and fall in love with uh, an uh, christian or muslims in college why it could be so again as a really uh, interfaith consultant also you have to understand what may have gone there so let me explain you how why they fall in love hindus have taught iswarala tero naam pluralism secularism we are all open minded respecting all ra 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 so they kid, kids think that ground is flat everybody are saying okay now let's say there is the other side uh, christian or muslim comes and they says you know there is one god so why to fight so many people fighting getting killed uh, in the name of god that's nonsense isn't it so your daughter will say yeah yeah it is nonsense i agree and yeah it's true it is uh, nonsense and then the slowly the relationships uh, go and then there's sometimes there is a sympathy game that muslim will say you know this uh, hindus they are giving so much trouble this modi government is giving us so much trouble and this uh, christians will say you know they are burning our church and giving us hard time and then sort of creating a sympathy game and then your daughter will start feeling ah oh, you know you are right i mean i i think it it's a nonsense they should not be doing those things so slowly and slowly uh the girl start feeling sympathy bad for the other party and then uh, the other party may spend uh, lots of money to please her and definitely she will uh, they will give the love probably 10 times more than anybody else could offer and love men nacha var kar denge so with that naturally she fall in love so once she is in fall start getting feeling for it and then the relation goes in the second gear and then discussion see up till now there is no discussion of religion and all of a sudden now once you are in love you fall in love start getting are uh, dating to each other and then discussion start coming uh, by the way who is god and then uh, hindu invariably hindu cannot explain who is god in one minute right you will not and then uh, this guy will say hindu will that girl girl may say you know we have rama krishna all those gods and all that but that's how can you have so many gods why don't you explore your own god so here maybe your son or daughter let's say never even visited the temple and now want to learn that who is god so they go to mandir mandir mein koi aunty wo shivling pe mand, uh, milk pour kar rahi hai aunty aunty wait 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 why you are pouring milk on shivlinga to aunty says pata nahi beta ye karte hai to sabhi acha ho jata hai you know your son will think what a stupid uh, i mean uh, rational there is no rational you cannot pour milk and acha ho jayega in on some stone the point is your son or daughter will get a wrong feeling and they start uh, feeling that hinduism is a hoax religion bad religion i don't care for you guys and that was the objective of that whoever the muslim boy or girlfriend or sick uh, or uh, christian that was the objective to create holes in your ideology so after the relation goes further and then at the end this is the bottom line will come you know sorry i cannot marry you because uh, my mother 
whatever doesn't matter convert 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 that's the only thing so that's where they get trapped into it now what hindu youths thinks at that time mm, they come back home and think mm, ah, i love him he's a wonderful guy so nice lovely guy and he's asking me to convert i don't really care for i'm a secular uh, i don't care for uh, hinduism anyway what should i do so they are thinking mm, you know i believe in so many hindu gods and as a matter of fact i'm even more secular that i believe in jesus allah uh quran sikhism everything i'm i'm for all so what's the problem accepting one more god so this is okay i will convert but what you don't know the guy is saying there is only one god and that's my god meaning you have to only accept their god you are not accepting new god but you are removing all your gods and that's uh, you are submitting to somebody's exclusive supremacist ideology so that's the problem you don't know now it's invariably that many hindus especially in india youths thinks that hinduism is like a jungle some forest pata nahi kaisa religion hai kaise ek minute mein samjha nahi sakte hai logo ko versus is i mean islam is clear you take the quran and uh, it tells you everything nice clean clear message uh, this christianity is so wonderful nice churches and nice priest wearing white clothes and it's so clean neat versus mandir to pata nahi kitne gande hote meaning i agree so let me compare why hinduism is difficult to understand does not mean it's a good or bad but i'll let you judge it i'm taking it uh, from uh, raji malhotra ji he is describing hinduism as a amazon forest you know amazon forest nice green lush giving out lot of oxygen fresh versus american farm corn or wheat farm 100 acres of farm continuously crop being grown there are big big machine comes and till so much crop being collected and wow america can feed the whole world so we are comparing forest to farm forest to hinduism uh amazon and farm to islam and christianity okay let's see uh as per if it is a farm it can have a founder somebody founded this farm started this founder like in uh, this uh, jesus and mohammed they are the founders hinduism we don't hinduism don't have any founder further they believe that there is a beginning and end means there was nothing 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 god made this world in 6 days and rested 7 days because was tired and on judgment day again everything will disappear this lights uh, this computer everything will be removed and uh, judge god will judge uh, you are in heaven you are in hell so that's their belief on hinduism side as i said that uh, there is no beginning no end it's a continuous cyclical in uh they have a clear commandments how shall you do boom 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 hinduism has a general dharmic guidance that uh, and you follow through make up your own mind what is logical and follow this there is nothing do and don't further they have a very hierarchical for example god then jesus then uh, the church and then uh, this uh, priest and then you so there is a clear hierarchical hierarchical uh, there is a pope there what is hinduism it's you and god directly you don't need gita bhagavad gita or mandir or priest to go to heaven you can just talk to god directly one to one relationship further they have a clear message because if you don't know the bible was not written by jesus there are only three chapters about jesus in bible the rest is 95% is written by somebody else these are the collection of stories and 325 years after jesus birth long after he was gone this bible was voted and put together so bible is not a god's word in that sense and quran is they took the bible and uh, muhammad made additional uh, changes to and that's a quran i mean it's a people muslim will say that's a god's message quran uh, was told to muhammad versus hinduism uh, there is a lot of messages there and the worst point in terms of interfaith marriages is that uh, when it's a farm 
A corn in wheat farm is a weed, and weed in a corn farm is a weed. And then the lion, uh, that's a weed wheel all the time. So if anything else comes, that has to be plucked out and to be destroyed. They cannot tolerate uh, one other. In Not only that, Christian cannot tolerate even Muslims, each, even each other. And millions have been killed between Christians and Muslims versus between Jains and Hindus. In historically, there is no nobody has uh, died in terms of proving that I'm Hindu or uh, Jain, whatever. So there is a lot of tolerance there. Now let's think back and this one. Okay, this is the way these two are. Now, are you, why are you concerned about this farm, forest, jungle type of thing? You want nice and clean thing? See, when there is a democracy, like India where Modi and Mamta Banerjee, oh, all kind of, oh my God, it will drive you nuts. American democracy, same thing. Go to Washington, oh, Donald Trump comes and Joe Biden comes, oh, what a mess. They keep on fighting all the time. See, in spite of all those junk going on on media, still everybody wants to come to America. Still everybody likes Indian democracy. Versus other side, how, how many people wish to move to China? Where everything is no problem. There is no hala beauty. In Beijing, Shanghai, everything goes by the law. Nobody is making any complaint. Who wants to move to Saudi, Saudi Arabia? Again, no problem. So you have to decide. You want nice, clean, cut rules or you want uh, democracy the way it is going. So that's the big difference between two. Well, let's move further. Why Abrahamic asked for religious conversion? What is in the religion, which is very important as a consultant for you to understand, and then you can go and guide others. So <laughs> you are being uh, Abrahamic faith 101. So now assume you are in a college, sitting in a college class and learning. So great. What they believe, the world was created in seven days. One day one, uh, the God created uh, the sun, then sky, and then uh, trees, and stars, and birds. And then on sixth day, God put on the human, the uh, Adam. And then God was tired, so he rested on the seventh day. Okay. They don't believe in Darwin's law of evolution. You learn in, in science, right? That we were monkeys and slowly went. Nope. As far Bible is concerned, as far Islam is concerned, that's a hoax. Don't believe in those ones. Because Adam was the first person and the Eve was created out of Adam's rib. And uh, then they were innocent. And then you know that story. They ate the apple. They were told not to eat it. And that's why all of a sudden they are carrying the original sin. So this, we all... As per them, everybody in this world, whoever you see, we are brothers and sisters, uh, meaning we are created from Adam and Eve. That's their philosophy. So then that story goes further. There was a Noah's Ark and it, everybody were saved. And now how these three faiths are related? Let's look it over. The Abrahamic, Abraham was there in 1943 BCE. At that time, God's name was the Lord God. There, at that time, only Judaism was the religion there. I mean, other than pagan and many other religions there, but among Abrahamic. Now, in those faiths, they have a God, and God does not talk to individual people. Don't talk to you. God talks to an apostle. Now, apostle is not same as guru. Apostle is God decided anybody that I want to talk, and they come and tell you. So God talked to Abrahamic. That's why he's apostle, and all those are apostles. And then they have other one, Isaac, Jacob, uh, Moses. Moses is the one who heard that uh, Ten Commandments, which probably you may have seen that movie. And then David, Solomon. These are all Jewish uh, time uh, apostles. And then came Jesus. And uh, Jesus was a Jew. He saw what is going on. He says, what is all those uh, practice? He did not like all those practices. And uh, he start making uh, changes in then Judaism practices. So because Jew, Jew, uh, Jesus made trouble there, he was hanged to death. So uh, Jesus was hanged to death. And then uh, 
as I said, that some 325 years after uh, in Nisi's creed, basically Christianity was uh, put together in uh, in Bible put together, and they now Jesus is Jesus a normal one of the apostles just like that? No, they says Jesus is something more. So what they did it, they made it that Jesus is a son of God. So that's something new. Uh, God is supposed to be nirankari. God cannot have any shape, akar, whatever, according to Abrahamic faith. But all of a sudden, now God can have a son. Then uh, it's the same like Hinduism. If God can have a son, then he could have a daughter and mother and father and uh, grandmother, and just like Hinduism has it. So, and they change the name of God from Lord God to now they call it Father God, meaning the God. Now, some again 570 Muhammad was born, and in uh, roughly 620, uh, uh, I believe it's uh, that's where Muhammad start getting uh, revelations from God, and that's what the Quran is. And Muhammad says, mm, "How can God is a nirankari? How can God have shaped this Jesus as a son of God?" So in Bible says the to say that Jesus is a son of a God is a monstrous falsehood. And further, Bible said, "Don't make friends with Christians and." Uh, and Jews, and uh, then they promoted the Islam, and again name got changed. God got a new name now, Allah. Now keep in mind that these are the names are not interchangeable. Uh, Jews will not say Allah, and uh, Christians will not say Father God. Uh, and uh, on name of the God, millions of people have been killed, even though it's the same God they are praying to. So, but that's interesting. So that's on different Abrahamic faiths. Now the Ten Commandments, the Second Commandment. If you don't know it, it's it says, "I am the Lord your God. You shall not have no other god before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in the heaven above or on the earth beneath, or that is water uh, uh, water under the earth." Meaning whatever Hinduism's practice of making uh, murtis and pray, absolutely, absolutely none acceptable by the Abrahamic gods. And further, the God says, I'm a jealous God. I will punish your children. If you do something, your innocent children to three to four generations will be punished if you reject me. And note that this jealous God is not a typo. In Bible, I counted it says 31 times, angry God 238 times, and fear word is used 455 times. Now, Christian exclusivism. Christians believe that Jesus is the son of God and that the faith in Jesus is the only way to achieve salvation. You want to get moksha? Become baptized. Jesus himself said, I am the way, truth, and no one comes to Father except through me meaning you must be baptized and anybody who is not baptized is a sinner. Sinner, you remember that original sin, whatever Adam, uh, because he ate the, that's a sin, you are carrying it. And you want to remove that sin, Adam uh, ate the apple sin, uh, then uh, you better get baptized. That's So for them, sin, sin, sin is so heavy in their mind, they keep on hammering on and on the churches. <laughs> what does he mean? Okay, Mother Teresa is baptized, so she will go to heaven, understood. How about Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi? Ask them. Now, churches are very powerful and you, you cannot understand the power of churches even today. For example, Maya, uh, on my book, page 97, she was in love with a Christian boy and uh, she says that the uh, boy says, uh, I want to have a church wedding. So she says, yeah, sure, wonderful. Why not? I love it because I like to wear that white dress and throw that bouquet. Oh, why not? And we'll have a Hindu wedding. But then they came back and says, you know, you can have Hindu wedding, but you know, you have to do the Hindu wedding in a secrecy. Nobody should find it out. So she says, wait, I'm doing church wedding in public. Why? What is the scene I'm doing? I mean, why it has to be in hiding? But she says, okay, I will convince my parents. Let's go for it. 
she agreed to it now just two months before the wedding day the church comes back and says that you need to sign this prenuptial agreement that children will be raised in christian faith only so that's where she got alerted she came to me on my website and says admin what is this nonsense i'm willing to put up having hindu wedding in secrecy but what is this uh, why children has to be why have to write it in give it in writing that's not what something uh, we agreed in our love relationships we've been love it for 2 3 years he never said that thing why church is demanding that so she i brainwash her she says she told them no nope, i will not sign this prenuptial agreement do what you want now the church is telling she cannot church cannot tell anything to hindu girl but they are telling the father or the in laws who are church goers that they will take away the holy communion rights church will bless them every week and church will not bless them anymore so i mean those guys will be remain sinner those uh, christian in laws and they have a burial site they bought a burial site in their church so they want to go in peace with jesus and now church says we'll take your burial site out we don't want you sinner because your son is not converting the hindu so now there is a tremendous pressure being put on this hindu girl she wants to go and please these the christian in laws and be nice to them but instead of that now she is going to be responsible for uh, all the sins in laws will have to commit so think of the tremendous pressure a 22 year old girl hindu girl is going to put on she cannot go and tell her parents what's going on because they don't understand all those things and this is okay what the hell i'll sign this document let's get the matter over so point i'm trying to make is even today the churches are so powerful the imams and uh, mosques are so powerful the muslim community is so powerful which is beyond imagination of uh, hindus this karina and saif and uh, sarukh khan may get away but, but they are celebrities for an average person to get away like that that's very challenging and that's just keep in mind again as a you are looking at as a consultant so you have to help uh, those uh, who are you are consulting accordingly now i want to make sure that i'm not here to criticize any religion please now as a matter of fact in america i have seen many hindu christian marriages and they are doing great really in many cases hindu hindu marriages break up in 6 months hindu christian marriages they go on forever they are wonderful life believe me to give you example i was in my church uh, mandir in pennsylvania uh, and this particular cop he came back and he says kemcho <laughs> by the way mai gujarati hu isliye wo cop ne mujhe gujarati mein bolta suna to bolta hai ke kem chho where did you learn uh, white cop where did you learn uh, gujarati he says my wife is hindu and gujarati then uh, as you can see she he came in the i said come on over in mandir he came over there he saw everything he did uh, namaste prana and he also said uh, i want to bring my mere bachcho ko leke aana hai mujhe yahan i mean he said in english that i uh, want to bring my children here to mandir see point is i really honor people like that i don't care if they go to church and follow jesus including that hindu following jesus i don't have any problem and this guy comes and respects so nicely see americans you may have a wrong impression but there are i would i would say 70% of americans that i come across they are so wonderful so open minded in uh, accepting hindus as is but i have noticed that especially christians especially coming from india oh my god they are so anti hindus even staying in america so you cannot generalize just by looking at somebody you have to look what they are into it and that's what as a consultant i am trying you to tell take time to understand who they are and then give your judgment now moving to islam what is quran is telling for non hindus or uh, i mean quran is telling on non hindus or non muslims or specifically for hindus quran says quran 456 those that deny our revelations whatever is in quran we will burn them in fire no sooner their skin get burn allah will give them the new skin not out of mercy but you can 
pour the hot oil again so you get burned ouch a second time so you get pain twice further quran 491 says hold them all those unbelievers and kill them whenever you find them now allah can kill them allah is powerful but on such men allah gave absolute authority to an individual muslim now again i'm sure every scripture has here there something which is objectionable and maybe this killing means uh, maybe giving rose uh, flowers i don't know what does it mean but that's uh, cut and paste from quran now what is quran on interfaith marriages and to say that i'm taking one really beautiful article just got published uh, in new york times again this giving example is easier way to understand uh, and that's why i'm giving you examples it was in the new york times myra fairoqi it's a pakistani girl is in love with a hindu indian hindu boy in san francisco i live in san francisco it's the same city very open progressive city so they are in love and again everything uh, myra is writing they were in romantic love for 9 months during the covid time and she says somehow she got connected uh, on internet uh, with this boy now what is she says on the fifth day she did not say all those thing for months but on her, their fifth day when they get together she is telling the hindu boy you need to understand that only way forward our relationship is you have to convert now hindu boy did not understand what does he mean and right away in one second he says yes i am for it no problem हिंदू को पता नहीं क्या कन्वर्जन है चलो कन्वर्ट कर लेंगे क्या है आई मीन लव इट ओके नाउ व्हाई फारूकी सेड शी हैज टू कन्वर्ट ही द बॉय हैज टू कन्वर्ट बिकॉज ऑफ कुरान 221 कुरान सेज यू शैल नॉट वेड ए पेगन वुमन मीनिंग समबडी हु इज आइडल वर्शिपर्स अनलेस दे एम्ब्रेस द फेथ ए बिलीविंग स्लेव गर्ल इज बेटर देन एन आइडोल meaning uh, those she may please you meaning a status of hindu girl is less than a slave girl so if you are a hindu girl are you willing willing to put up this ideology that you are less than a slave girl okay further quran says 6011 that do not maintain this marriage with unbelievable woman if woman is unbeliever meaning not believing in quran and convert it to islam then that's a sin zina to sleep with that lady so let's say you got married by special marriage act you are marrying i mean wonderful with a muslim and you are 10 years into married relationship if all of a sudden now this guy reads that wow this is what i am doing is sin if he becomes islamic at that stage after 10 marriage a uh, 10 years of marriage and two children now you are stuck because at that time he will ask you to convert are you ready so it's like a latakti tarwar yes uh, there is a sword on your head you never know when it's uh, get released so it's always risk having uh, interfaith marriage but uh, at least you can avoid till that time by not asking for conversion now what is bothering me with this myra fairoqi case is okay if she is a believer in islam then why in her own article in her own words she says they kiss each other they dance each other with each other in privately in their uh, apartment they drank alcohol wine i mean she is a muslim why she is doing all those things further she herself writes it that she had several romantic relationships with muslims and non muslim alike now again she was not naive she further writes that she was aware of the prohibition of marrying outside my faith and culture that muslim girl cannot marry outside so she fully know what she is doing she believes in allah's uh, quran 221 and 6011 as i said but then why she kiss and dance and uh, drank because quran also said 2430 and read what uh, zakir nights explained nicely that a muslim boy is supposed to lower their gaze and walk away from this relations enjoying believing men turn their eyes from temptation 
and restrain from carnal desires. So if you don't follow Quran 2430, but you want Quran, believing in Quran 221, Mayra Faruqi, you are nothing but love jihadi. What, is, what was your intention? Why did not disclose on the first day that you will have to convert? Why you hold on to it? So that's interesting case. Now let's move Judaism. You may not know enough about Judaism, but let me explain. Judas, Jewish people, they think they are a chosen people. Among all others, God has chosen them. Uh, further, Jews will not uh, I'll, uh, say uh, uh, worshipping to Jesus or Allah or idol worshipping. Absolutely no, no. They believe in circumcision so vitally, they call it ceremony, brace on eighth day of the boy. And if that did not, doesn't happen, it's something negative. Good. They have a superstition, something negative will happen. So I met, again, example helps. I was uh, traveling uh, in America. This is the Mount Rushmore, where uh, there was an Indian lady and a white man with uh, kids there. And uh, they were a little start chit chatting with them and uh, within five minutes the uh, white man is telling me that you know ours is not an interfaith marriage i'm a jewish i say wait <laughs> how can it be this is a desi girl you are a jewish man how come it's not an interfaith marriage explain me so he's explaining me again it's only five minutes of uh, we just met okay and he start telling me up front and the uh, hindu girl is uh, uh, listening to me or former Hindu girl and he says uh, the girl has spent two years in their synagogue understood the Torah clearly and by her wish choice she has converted to Judaism and that girl was uh, I looked at the girl and she was uh, with a stone face she was looking down probably she was feeling shameful for or I don't know what it was in her mind see this is interesting Christian, Muslims, and Jew, they don't force me, uh, you convert, to convert. They want you to convert by your choice. Who you are fooling to? If this girl met a Christian boy, she would have converted to Christianity. If it was a Muslim, she would have converted to Islam. If she married to a Buddhist, she would have converted to Buddhism. She just does not have any faith. So she's open to convert whatever. So don't tell that she did it by choice. See, this is the sin to say that uh, you did it by choice. Actually, it's a pressure, no doubt about it. Now, uh, two marriages are not same. Uh, let me take uh, Jews, Christian marriages. You will find it interesting what's going uh, on America. It's the same kind of thing what I described Khan family. It's the same way. Let's look at this one. Chelsea Clinton, you know, uh, President Clinton and Hillary Clinton, that her daughter, they are Methodist, Christian, and she married to a Jew person, and they are happily married. She's still Methodist, he's still Jew, wonderful. In line with my message. Great. You know, Ivanka Trump, Donald Trump's daughter, married to Jared Kushner. Uh, she has converted to Judaism for marriage. Again, not in line with my message, but well, if we are happy, who I am to complain about. I'm just wondering, hmm, what did Donald Trump thought at that time? What kind of deal he was looking for uh, when he allowed his daughter to marry to Jared Kushner and converting? I don't know. But the worst scenario is this one. And very interesting. And actually, these are the, it's a Jew-Christian marriage. These are the typical Hindu boys, all of them. They are just like that, just like uh, this Joseph. The girl says, uh, Rebecca, a Jewish, Joseph, a Christian. She says, Rebecca says, you have to convert. So Joseph says, Rebecca, I love you. No problem. I'll convert for you. No problem. Rebecca pushed the punch uh, button further. The child must be Jewish only. Joseph again, Rebecca, I love you. No problem. Great. Now they have a child. They are raising the child every day. Judaism, Judaism, Judaism. Now this uh, Joseph says, wait, I'm a Christian. Why not? And it's my daughter. Why not? Uh, she can have a baptism. 
So the this is a, a Christian, a Jewish daughter. He took it on live or took a reporter live on TV. He got that Jewish daughter baptized, and you know it's a big sin. You cannot have two labels, Jews and uh, uh, Christian label on one child. You know, Hindus and uh, Jain, they will not have problem. Put on as many labels you want to put it on. But no, for them, it's a big deal. It becomes a big media sensation in America. That becomes a lawsuit case. They make a file a lawsuit against uh, Joseph that he did uh, against their practices. So point my point being, I tell all Hindus, and all of them. It's same thing, Muslims also, they should not fake convert to Hinduism. And Hindus should not fake convert to Islam or Christianity just for marriage. Unless you have a really true faith in, if you fake convert, you will just create this kind of uh, legal trouble later on, not only for you, for your spouse, your children, your whole both side of family and the community. It's a mess. Don't fake convert. My message is never fake convert. Unless you have a true faith. Now we are moving further. I know it's going long and long, but uh, what can we do about expectations of conversions? And I will go a little brief there. I met uh, Swami Dan and Saraswati Ji. He's no more with us, but uh, I met him in 2008. And he says, Tell all Hindus, and I'm telling you that you be the Hindu first. Uh, every day do puja and do take prasad and then go in the morning. If you install good dharmic value, you don't have to worry nothing. Let the child go and marry whoever. Actually, that's a very good message. Other thing at home front, I'm asking you all male men who are married people, treat your wife well. Meaning, are you helping her cleaning the dishes every day basis? You have to be a husband, type of husband that your daughter is looking to marry to. So are you the kind of husband? So the day you become that kind of husband, you know, if you did these things, then your daughter will make sure she will marry somebody just like you, meaning Hindu. If not, you are treating your wife like dirt bag. She says, uh, well, I don't want to marry this kind of guy. Interview, in, further, as a parent, improve your image with your children. Never say BMW in America, we say uh, black, Muslim, white. I mean, that's a racism. You cannot tell these kind of things, racisms, uh, telling, making other look bad to your children, and that will backfire on you. And as I told you, don't assume that children will marry with, uh, within faith only. Expect the worst and be prepared for it. Now on the day, and uh, mom, I'm in love with Mohammed, dad, I'm in love with Jennifer, and all of a sudden, parents start making all oh, irrational reactions. I not told you not to marry interfaith. Muslims are bad, Christians are bad, whatever. You lost the case on the first day because the uh, let's say if it was your daughter. She was already trained. Your dad will say these things. Your dad will say these things. And, and now you say it. And you lost the case. And she said, hell with you. I'm going to marry whoever I want to. I'm not going to listen to you. Instead of that, what I'm telling you, and that's what please guide to other people to do in this situation if you come across, be realistic. First, collect facts. Keep your mouth shut, ears open. Listen to them. Listen to them. Uh, go meet all the relatives. All their Muslims, let's say if it is a Muslim, then go meet all their uncle, auntie, chacha, chachi, uh, their villages, go meet them. Or go to their mosque and put on the biggest uh, bindi you can think of, put on the nice sari and go to the mosque. Yeah, let's go there. What will happen in mosque? As soon as you enter there, Imam will say, ladies, go in the back. Only guys come in the front. Uh, not even back, in different room. Right away, your daughter will say, wait, wait. You know, our mandir, we are sitting next to each other. Why they are discriminating us? Still, you don't say anything. You just keep on listening. Point is, if you know, collected all the facts, and after three, four months of collecting facts, now you open your mouth and tell them, you know, beta, everything I like it. But why are they talking about religious conversion? 
why not share and respect with equality 50 50 everything 50 50 i will not ask for 51 percent never but i will not settle for 49 percent see when you talk tell this way nice way you've been so nice and what your, your son or daughter will say you know papa mommy no you are pretty reasonable i never i thought you were going to kill me instead of that you being so helpful and you are really wonderful and whatever you are saying no very true don't worry i will explain to the boy or girl and we'll fix it you know again you don't say anything they go back again in three months it's possible she may come back you know i kick that guy out because he was a little, i mean uh, he was out of his mind he, he cannot understand these things my point is let the your son or daughter make their own decision based on fact and it has to be their own decision if they do it this way you will have much better outcome versus you try to impose something on their shoulder so uh, if you propose this no bbs meaning those religious labels uh for more jews it's a breeze for Christians, baptism, as I said, you get you once you take the baptism, all your sin washed away. <laughs> uh, I should not laugh that. That's their beliefs, and it's a highly respected uh, rituals, and they they have right to believe whatever they want to believe. And sahada, meaning non-believers are sinners. Uh, everybody must convert to uh, Islam by saying just saying, la la illa la Muhammadur Rasulullah. One minute, you are the Muslim. Done deal. Very easy. Keep this religious label out. Keep the options open and go get married. Now, what I'm saying is, uh, what will be the religion of the children born? For that, I say that let the interfaith child decide his or her faith. You don't decide it uh, during your dating time that children will be Muslim only. No. How could you decide it? Child has, I mean, we are date, still dating. You're talking about. Uh, let the child come, we will teach them both and they can decide whatever they want to be. I mean, that's logical. I believe if you are in college, you find this very logical thing to please sell this message, by the way, to people in your college. The example is, best example is Barack Obama. His uh, father was Muslim, mother was Christians. He knew both faiths at age 22 something in Chicago he by his own choice decided to be a christian so be it. so if you are in an interfaith love relationship show this example if barack obama is a nicely successful person and he make his own decision our children will follow these footsteps of barack obama will teach kit from gita will teach from bible will teach from quran and uh, child will judge on their own what is right for them so i hope that's the right message no BBS for sure. This is like a COVID, COVID vaccine. What is the name of COVID vaccine? In terms of uh, interfaith marriages, no BBS is the name of the vaccine. No BBS. Remember, uh, let me repeat. No BBS is your vaccine. If that's followed, you are secure. Now, let's say your daughter is, or you come in a situation where uh, uh, somebody's daughter, Brahmin daughter, married to Islam, start wearing hijab by her own choice, performing namaz, and here father is uh, doing puja in the same home. What to do then? And somebody came in and says, can you help? You are a consultant, and can you help me? You know, follow what uh, Swami Arumuga told me, and I mean, I did not like it, but actually he's very right. It's your son and daughter. Give them lots of love. Better. You are wearing hijab, you are putting namaz, no problem. Keep doing whatever you are doing it. I love you, Vita, and you are my daughter. That's it. It's difficult to believe, but still, look out the strategy. Make them part of family. Uh, the in-law who are Muhammad, let's say Muhammad is the in-law. When he comes, treat him, feed him nice food and uh, make him like a family. But remind equality. Vita, what you're doing it, you know, that's not equality. You are submitting to somebody's faith without thinking, or probably you may have thought, but uh, but reminding that's not equality. Okay. Go to their religious activity when they were Muharram, go there and respect their belief. But at the same token, invite 
next day invite to our hindu mandir oh today is ram navmi beta come on over bring mama too and uh, they will says mom dad don't you understand i'm muslim i cannot come to ram navmi doesn't matter oh now it's a krishna Jan- janmashtami come on out oh today is a garba gujarati uh, we will have a wonderful dance oh no i cannot come why you cannot come it's just a dance i mean uh, don't look at the card i mean it's it just uh, you go to why, why not what is wrong in that so meaning keep on inviting to hindu activity even though she keeps on rejecting it and then when they have, she has a ch- sons uh, children at that time then you take it over the name counts if possible like uh, naomi a uh, quranic name see they muslims know it that name is so much vital name counts if possible give them a dharmic name original b- before christian uh, b- before muslim came to america uh, to india name uh when question comes up about circumcision tell them wait is it a science or superstition i have a page on on my book 44 explain how to explain them uh it's it's not logical cutting the skin has no scientific merit so try to fight it also let's say you are babysitting your grand uh, muslim granddaughter sons and they are going out to work whatever so you have a chance you have grandson with you install dharmic value with them uh join them in uh, puja every day and if you have money you house whatever spend lot of money right now including taking them to big big vacations and all that so the grandchildren should feel that you know those hindu those brahmin uh, in laws we go there oh my god those are fun grand in laws versus the other one oh my god they are stingy they don't spend money for us they, i don't like them so meaning they create the positive feeling for you even at the expense that when you die my god when they open the chest i mean there is no money left because you spend all your in your life that's a smart strategy give your money with your warm hand when your hands are warm once hands are cold once you die eh, what's the sense giving them money no sense point is strategies okay if girl converted to islam so be it but keep on and if you can bring the grandchildren back to his hinduism that's a big gain so never give up at any stage of life you need to believe in yourself and keep hammering what can mandirs do again we are coming very close to it and we'll take questions soon uh mandir can do a lot mandir has to be objective their objective should be to stop conversions and focus on equality the wedding officiant the pandit who comes out and uh do hindu rituals they have to be able to guide hindu youths like what i am telling you here they should be able to also explain legality of interfaith marriage that okay you are going to marry by islamic wedding and you going to register your marriage by islamic marriage act you know that means the all your divorces and whole marriage will be dictated by islamic law why don't you get married by special marriage act if you follow the hindu marriage act register it by then then everything will be by hindu marriage act so the pandit should be able to explain the laws little bit not much and also pandit should clarify that the bachcho ko dono religion sikhana chahiye why not both uh every mandir should have a marriage consultation survey one of you should be sitting here on mandir put a sign that now i am an interfaith marriage consultant come and guide for guidance so you should be able to guide them every mandir should have it and in mandir we need to change some practices wo uh, ritual chalti rehti hai ye lagao ye lagao wo laga instead of that you have to use more explanation ki we doing these things because of these reasons ye phool lagate hai iska meaning ye hai तो जो बच्चे बैठे हैं दे नो के क्या चल रहा है सो मंदिर शुड वी शुड डू इट डिफरेंट वे तो दे विल अंडरस्टैंड मोर ऑल्सो ये जो बच्चे हैं छोटे बच्चे उसको मंदिर में काम में लगा दो भाई ये काम ये करो तू ये काम इफ दे गेट पार्ट ऑफ मंदिर मैनेजमेंट यंग बॉयज 10 15 इयर्स ओल्ड दे विल फील सो प्राउड अबाउट दैट देर इज समथिंग गुड फॉर इट एंड बाल विहार और संडे स्कूल शुड बी पार्ट ऑफ एवरी मंदिर 
बच्चे शुड बी कमिंग टू मंदिर एवरी संडे और वट एवर डे एंड सीखे घर वहां से वो इंडिया में वो पब्लिक स्कूल्स तो सिखाने रही है हिंदुइजम और रिलीजन्स तो कहाँ से सीखेंगे मंडिट शुड हैव दो संडे स्कूल्स सो आई एम एंडिंग इट हियर सो वट डिड आई टोल्ड यू यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड एज अ कंसल्टेंट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड लव रिलेशन सिचुएशन वॉट इज अचुएशन वेर यू आर स्टैंडिंग यू आर जस्ट स्टार्ट डेटिंग और यू आर ऑलरेडी मैरिड कन्वर्टेड स्टार्ट वेरिंग हिज आर वॉट स्टेज यू आर and your focus should be to understand are you an exclusivist supremacist ideology or you are one of the open minded like sarukh khan kind of guy very open minded person and to help out think of this bbs are you planning to this uh, label as i told you bbs the corona vaccine for interfaith marriage and the hindu party tell or if both of their you are consulting both of them tell them that you know don't fake it why to make lies and deception a foundation of your married life no faking if you want to convert convert but do you really understand have you read quran all that other thing is keep religious institute out why you involving those church you are smart you are educated why can't you make a decision on your own why you need and keep in mind you know those churches they cost 3 to 12 percent of your gross income you get the salary you have to give 3 percent to 12 percent to this church every month no escape so these are i mean why you want to, why you want to involve this church enjoy your money yourself you feel like you donate whenever you want it like you do in hindu mandir why you have to tied to the church be a pluralist open minded respect others ईश्वर आला तेलो नाम बनो इक्वालिटी फिफ्टी फिफ्टी यू डोंट बिलीव इट आई मीन समर इज एट एज ट्वेंटी टू एक्सप्लेन दैट यू मे नॉट केयर फॉर इक्वालिटी बिकॉज यू आर इन लव बट वेन यू बिकम फोर्टी फाइव यू विल चेंज सो इफ यू आर इक्वालिटी योर मैरिड लाइफ विल गो फॉर एवर लॉन्ग लास्टिंग एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट चिल्ड्रन शुड बी रेज इन टू फेज यू लाइक इट और नॉट एंड इफ यू एक्सप्लेन इट टू हिंदू साइड और वट एवर साइड it could be muslim you are explaining explaining this way and if they are in uh, fake converting to hinduism this is yeah this is i'm doing wrong i don't want to convert to hinduism it, it is is the because i don't have a real faith into it so that's uh, my message now i have summarized everything in my book i hope you can buy this book and read it not that i am trying to make money but it is in amazon pothi and in garuda it's being sold for only 125 rupees that's it cheap and uh, i kept it actually i'm every book i sell it i lose money but i kept it so cheap just so you get the message and the last page of book my message has been endorsed by this christian pastor tani uh hana khan the deb moto uh this uh, richard hyman who is a jewish uh sikh they all there is nothing wrong what i said they found it any other faith so that's what my message is i hope uh, it's a long message and uh, you will go out and uh, talk to all about uh, this message now you are an interfaith marriage consultant please share this video with others be prepared and if you do these things again repeating what i have been doing for 15 years 16 years i am uh, 69 years old how long i am going to keep doing it so please take control in your hands and go share it with everybody make this world a better place to live for all namaste thank you yes and uh, uh, it, it was an amazing uh, learning experience uh, amin ji and i'm sure ki viewers ko bhi bahut acha laga hoga unko unhone bhi bahut sari cheeze seekhi hongi because uh, it's become a growing menace in uh, bharat the forced religious conversions bahut zyada ho raha hai aur kai baar nahi manne pe agar baaton ko nahi maan rahi hai mahilaye bachiyan ya stri to fir unke sath durvyavhar ho raha hai unki उनकी बॉडी मिल रही है बैग्स में और इधर उधर बहुत सारी चीजें हो रही है तो आई थिंक आपने जो अप्रोच बचाया बताया है ये एक बहुत ही सुलझा हुआ अप्रोच है जो कि कोई भी इस अप्रोच को फॉलो कर सकता है 
और समझ सकता और अपने बच्चों को या अपने आस पड़ोस के लोगों को भी सिखा सकता है और ऐसी कैजुअलिटी से बचा सकता है हमारी बहनों को बेटियों को और हमारे लोगों को तो यस इट वाज एन अमेजिंग डिस्कशन मैं सारे दर्शकों से रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी कि आप जाके वो बुक को भी लें और बुक को पढ़ें और आप लोग खुद भी कंसल्टेशन शुरू करें ऑन दीज टॉपिक्स डॉक्टर अमीन जी ने एक बहुत अच्छी बात बोली बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द डिस्कशन उन्होंने कहा कि ही हैज डन एंड ही इज स्टिल डूइंग व्हाट ही हैज टू डू बट नाउ वी ऑल आल्सो हैव टू टेक द मिशन फॉरवर्ड एंड उसी से रिलेटेड आज का ये सेशन था ताकि हम समझ सकें कि कैसे काउंसिल करना कैसे हैंडल करना और पैनिक नहीं करना है पैनिक करने पे और ज्यादा गड़बड़ी होती है तो बहुत ही बुद्धिमता और दिमाग से हमें इन सब चीजों को हैंडल करना है यस yes, आज के लिए दिलीप जी आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप हमारे साथ जुड़े मुझे भी आपने सिखाया एक कंसल्टेंट आपने बना दिया मुझे भी <laughs> बैठे बैठे आई मीन लाइक इट्स एन अमेजिंग थिंग एंड आई एम श्योर दूर्स ऑल्सो लव इट आज के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद दिलीप जी नमस्ते एंड बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद thank you and uh, thank you for this opportunity if anybody is in interfaith love relationship and if you need help reach out to me interfaithshadi at gmail.com uh information is below and also if you want to be a certified uh consultant i can give you a certificate from uh, interfaith shadi for that also reach out to me i i have a consultation program so you feel proud that you achieve a certificate and you can go and uh, explain to others so thank you very much thank you for dilip ji dilip ji dilip ji chalte chalte ek sawal aaya hai hamare ek darshak ka wo keh rahe hain batman ji keh rahe hain dilip ji mohammed married aisha when she was 6 and consummated the marriage at 9 do you tell all the hindus about this this can stop dharm parivartan your thoughts chalte chalte aapke thoughts amin ji uh yes this is a, a very i mean as a today standard this is a really really absolutely sad if you are religious uh, somebody you a uh, a uh, godly person and marries uh, some very young why uh, muslims argue that uh, well uh, aisha mohammed uh, had some uh, 11 wives at a time some thirty girls in his life uh, and mama did all those because they did not had somebody somebody else to take care so that's why he adopted them what i counter argue that why adopted aisha as a wife why not 6 years old aisha as a daughter is it or granddaughter so yes you can use this during consultation but again this answer is like a sledge hammer as soon as you bring this up to somebody who is in love relationship and uh, within half an hour of your discussion as a consultant if you bring this point up you lost your case because the girl immediately find it sit out that you are a pro hindu guy you are already anti islamic or already degrading i mean making mohammed look bad so you have some hidden agenda and uh, so please don't use this sledge hammer meaning badi hammer laga diya uh, <laughs> you try to kill the case no as i said as a consultant you need to go very very slowly in actually in first meeting when you meet for one hour to boys and girls don't even say anything just keep on listening and understand the secret of this consultation you go to psychiatrist psychiatrist kya karega baithe baithe sunte rahe lagega hmm hmm muk mein paisa kamayega aapka that's what you have to do it you have to just be a good listener and only you listen them one two three hours then only you know exactly what it is so yes whatever you said about mohammed aisha that is very true but don't use it for uh, uh uh this consultation because it just backfires जी अब एक और लास्ट क्वेश्चन आ गया है अमीन जी भारत कॉलिंग पॉडकास्ट जी पूछ रहे हैं व्हाट इज द बेसिक चैलेंज इन हिंदू फैमिली व्हिच डिस्टेंट चिल्ड्रन फ्रॉम पेरेंट्स एंड एज अ रिजल्ट चिल्ड्रन डजंट टॉक टू देयर पेरेंट्स आपको क्या लगता है व्हाट डू यू थिंक वी हैड दिस फुल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन पेरेंटिंग इट इज वेरी वाइटल दैट हिंदू पेरेंट्स 
or any parents have to know that the children are not their property. They just came to this world uh, through you. That's about it. So when they are with you for whatever 15, 17 years uh, till they go to college, give them a lot of love, give them a lot of responsibilities, give them, let them do all bad things they think they are bad. For example, as I give you examples that uh, my son, uh, when he was in ninth grade, he says he wants to go for prom, do a date and all that. Right away, I shut him off. Don't do it. But some friend told me that, what are you doing it? Let them do all bad things right in front of your eyes. Nothing wrong. Point is, if you train, respect it with your sons and daughter with love and respect and so give them a lot of responsibility, let them do good and bad what they want to do right in front of your eyes. They will respect you. So when they go away, still they will respect you. When they come back uh, once a while, they come back once a while. Then when they call, don't keep on complaining that, oh, you're not calling. Pantra din ke baad mein phone kiya. Kya? Bahut bigar ka hai. Nee, nee, don't say, oh, thank you. Very nice for calling. How is your work going? Wow, how is the life? Meaning, they talk what they like to hear. Talk in their language. For example, for me, I go to skiing with my sons. I go to hiking, camping with them. And when I do those things, they love it. Dad, come on over, let's go. Point is, do what they, you may be outdated, but don't think you are outdated. Be a new kind of person and talk in their language. They will listen to you. Yes. And um, um, Bharat Calling Podcast is our exclusive discussion on parenting, which uh, we have talked about a lot of knowledge. So I will also add it to it in the next videos. So you can see it. And yes, please like, share and subscribe. Keep spreading love, keep spreading peace and keep spreading uh, uh, Dr. Amin's message that they have given us training. Di. Dr. Amin, thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Namaste. you for this opportunity. Keep on continuing the mission. We have a big job for you. Share this video all over. Thank you very much.